Morning, Patrick. How are you today? Yeah? Bored? Want to go outside? I do understand, mate. I do get it. morning world and welcome to was it Tuesday 12th of July <sighs> so uh, I am on day nine I think it is ten of this COVID thing definitely feeling better but I think with the remnants of the infection and the heat, it was hot last night. I don't know if y'all slept, but I did not sleep at all well last night because it was just so hot. It wasn't a case of finding a cold spot on the bed to sleep in. It was nearly finding a dry spot because I know it sounds disgusting, but, but sweat. Yeah, it wasn't much fun last night. Right, so today, today, I've got to shift the straw out of the bottom barn to make room for the hay from Pigeon Mead, which we're fetching down as soon as I've moved the straw. And then when all that's done, um, I think we're gonna put the trailer on the New Holland, on the T7. Uh, we've got to take this tractor back over to Teller Farm because I should have 100 odd bales over there to pick up. And then I'm going to use the T7 if I can for a couple of trips to bring some bales back. And then tomorrow or next day, I think the T7 goes. And then we're having a T5 140 bought in. Uh, the T5 140, I think, is a bit more my size tractor. It's a lot smaller than the T7. It's shorter. Um, it will fit around my yards better. It's got front suspension and cab suspension. It's a fixed 140 horsepower machine, so there's no boost on that. It's just 140 horse. And I think that's kind of the magic figure, figure for me with where I want to be. I think that's a plenty of horsepower um, for everything I want to do. In fact, most of the time it'll, it'll be overpowered. But for the road work and whatever else, uh, I think the T5 uh, comes with a load of brackets fitted in the factory, or you can have them factory fitted. Um, and it sounds like there could maybe possibly just about be an option for a demonstrator, as in there may be a demonstrator on offer. Um, New Holland have made me a good offer for my tractor, or I, what I consider a fair offer for my tractor, so they're going to crunch some numbers. We'll see how that goes. I've not had any numbers back from Cotswold Farm Machinery on the case side yet, on the Maxim, and I've not heard from Massey Ferguson yet. So, still early days, still plenty of time to do everything. Um, still no decisions as to even if I'm actually going to change the tractor, because at the moment, Every tractor on the farm is bought and paid for. I owe nobody nothing. I know that's a double negative. Um, and if I upgrade to a newer tractor, then I go into debt. Um, debt's a dirty word to me, but sometimes it's needs must. So we'll see. We'll see. Watch this space. Hmm. It should. It should go around there if I take it all wide. But to get my tractor and a 25 foot trailer through there, it's gonna be a fairly fine line. And if you get the line wrong, you hit a gate post. Actually, that bay will be in there. It's gonna mess my line up a bit. What's the chances, or what's the likelihood? I'm gonna be reversing this back out again.
I'm going to have to touch that belt. Tight, 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 tight. Oh, I left that too late. Is he gonna go through there? That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Tight, but not too bad. Okay, next job. Put the straw from down there in here. So this, if you don't already know, is the 106 bales made, I had made for Abbey. Um, I haven't used conventional bales for 10 years. Um, but Abbey did struggle a bit this year trying to pull rain bales apart to feed her, her sheep. So basically I said, look, if I have a hundred little bales made, um, she can pay for the baling on everything she uses. So I haven't had the bill for the baling yet. So, so basically she'll buy her own hay. Um, uh, <laughs> the grass she gets for nothing, she's only gonna pay for the baling. So I'm not gonna be that tight on her. But, uh, so we're trying to run this business like if we can a bit with the farm. She needs to learn um, about the costs and the expenses of raising a crop of lambs or calves or whatever else. So nothing's for free. Uh, so yeah, that's her bales. And we had them stacked that way because she's basically said to me yesterday, she's made herself a giant armchair. You know, if she has, she has her sheep in here, she'll have somewhere she can sit up on the bales and sit and watch them. I think they'll probably end up taking the bales from this end and work their way that way. Um, yeah, yeah. So the things you do for your kids. So, but they are the future. Look at that big blue shiny thing in there. So I'm not going to use this for carting bales down from Pigeon Mead, simply because I don't I don't see the point. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I think if we get a couple of loads from Tother Farm today, or tomorrow, today, or tomorrow, maybe tonight and tomorrow morning, then uh, we'll use this fella for that. So I get to play with a big tractor, and you guys get to come along for the ride. I've got to shift that first, though. These bales have gone a bit soft. I've only got two forks and they want to pull through it, so I'll have to be gentle.
Well, it's in there, it's tidy, and if she wants to get a couple of bells, she can still get to that end to begin with, so. All right. We, we might move them again yet, but right now, I think I'm happier than where they are. Straw's done. That barn is rapidly filling up. I've now got all the hay from Pigeon Mead is also in there. Um, I know I've got 50 bells coming back, that's big squares, but I don't know if all the rest of the rounds are gonna fit in there or not. I don't mind if it's a bit of an overflow, it means I've got a few more than expected, which would be welcome. Uh, the grass from Pigeon Mead is actually bailed a lot better than I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be bed and breakfast. It's not as good as that, but they'll still eat that. So, yeah, right. So, in the 695 now and trip over to Itchington. I wouldn't mind if it was raining here because everything here is undercover but it's not. Sadly though, it is raining at the other farm. They've done the rain bales, but not the big squares. And I've rung the contractor, said if it's still raining, um, don't, don't bale it, leave it for a couple of days, let it dry out again. So there's no point in putting hay into big square bales, because I would not want to put that in the barn, not if it's been rained on. I don't want the barn on fire. So he said he's gonna be at least an hour, another hour before he gets there. He'll have a look at it. If it's dry enough, he'll bale it. If not, you'll leave it. So I've got to leave it to his discretion a little bit. But yeah, when I left, the roads were wet. So that's put paid for my evening's exploits. No point me going over there, pick up wet bales, none. <laughs> 